Mobile Phone Radiation and Health, Wikipedia Article Audio The effect of mobile phone radiation on human health is a subject of interest and study worldwide, as a result of the enormous increase in mobile phone usage throughout the world. As of 2015, there were 7.4 billion subscriptions worldwide though the actual number of users is lower as many users own more than one mobile phone. Mobile phones use electromagnetic radiation in the microwave range. Other digital wireless systems, such as data communication networks, produce similar radiation. Effects studied Blood-brain barrier Cancer Male fertility Electromagnetic hypersensitivity Glucose metabolism Base stations Safety standards and licensing Lawsuits Precautions Precautionary principle Precautionary measures and health advisories Bogus products the World Health Organization states that a large number of studies have been performed over the last two decades to assess whether mobile phones pose a potential health risk. To date, no adverse health effects have been established as being caused by mobile phone use. A 2010 review stated that the balance of experimental evidence does not support an effect of non-thermal radio frequency fields on the permeability of the blood-brain barrier, but noted that research on low-frequency effects and effects in humans was sparse. A 2012 study of low-frequency radiation on humans found no evidence for acute effects of short-term mobile phone radiation on cerebral blood flow. There is no strong or consistent evidence that mobile phone use increases the risk of getting brain cancer or other head tumors. The United States National Cancer Institute points out that radio frequency energy, unlike ionizing radiation, does not cause DNA damage that can lead to cancer. Its only consistently observed biological effect in humans is tissue heating. In animal studies, it has not been found to cause cancer or to enhance the cancer-causing effects of known chemical carcinogens. The majority of human studies have failed to find a link between cell phone use and cancer. In 2011 a World Health Organization working group classified cell phone use as possibly carcinogenic to humans. The CDC states that no scientific evidence definitively answers whether cell phone use causes cancer. In a 2018 statement, the FDA said that the current safety limits are set to include a 50-fold safety margin from observed effects of radio frequency energy exposure. A decline in male sperm quality has been observed over several decades. Studies on the impact of mobile radiation on male fertility are conflicting, and the effects of the radio frequency electromagnetic radiation emitted by these devices on the reproductive systems are currently under active debate. A 2012 review concluded that, together, the results of these studies have shown that RFEMR decreases sperm count and motility and increases oxidative stress. A 2017 study of 153 men that attended an academic fertility clinic in Boston, Massachusetts found that self-reported mobile phone use was not related to semen quality, and that carrying a mobile phone in the pants pocket was not related to semen quality. Some users of mobile phones and similar devices have reported feeling various nonspecific symptoms during and after use. Studies have failed to link any of these symptoms to electromagnetic exposure. In addition, as is not a recognized medical diagnosis. According to the National Cancer Institute, 
two small studies exploring whether and how cell phone radiation affects brain glucose metabolism showed inconsistent results. Experts consulted by France considered it was mandatory that the main antenna axis should not to be directly in front of a living place at a distance shorter than 100 meters. This recommendation was modified in 2003 to say that antennas located within a 100 meter radius of primary schools or child care facilities should be better integrated into the cityscape and was not included in a 2005 expert report. The Agence Française de Sécurité Sanitaire Environnementale as of 2009, says that there is no demonstrated short-term effect of electromagnetic fields on health, but that there are open questions for long-term effects, and that it is easy to reduce exposure via technological improvements. In order to protect the population living around base stations and users of mobile handsets, governments and regulatory bodies adopt safety standards, which translate to limits on exposure levels below a certain value. There are many proposed national and international standards, but that of the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection is the most respected one and has been adopted so far by more than 80 countries. For radio stations, ICNIR proposes two safety levels, one for occupational exposure, another one for the general population. Currently there are efforts underway to harmonize the different standards in existence. Radio base licensing procedures have been established in the majority of urban spaces regulated either at municipal-slash-county, provincial-slash-state or national level. Mobile telephone service providers are, in many regions, required to obtain construction licenses, provide certification of antenna emission levels and assure compliance to ICNIRP standards and slash or to other environmental legislation. Many governmental bodies also require that competing telecommunication companies try to achieve sharing of towers so as to decrease environmental and cosmetic impact. This issue is an influential factor of rejection of installation of new antennas and towers in communities. The safety standards in the U.S. are set by the Federal Communications Commission. The FCC has based its standards primarily on those standards established by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, specifically Subcommittee 4 of the International Committee on Electromagnetic Safety. Switzerland has set safety limits lower than the ICNIRP limits for certain sensitive areas. In the U.S., a small number of personal injury lawsuits have been filed by individuals against cell phone manufacturers NEC, Siemens, and Nokia on the basis of allegations of causation of brain cancer and death. In U.S. federal courts, expert testimony relating to science must be first evaluated by a judge, in a Daubert hearing, to be relevant and valid before it is admissible as evidence. In a 2002 case against Motorola, the plaintiffs alleged that the use of wireless handheld telephones could cause brain cancer and that the use of Motorola phones caused one plaintiff's cancer. The judge ruled that no sufficiently reliable and relevant scientific evidence in support of either general or specific causation was proffered by the plaintiffs, accepted a motion to exclude the testimony of the plaintiffs' experts and denied a motion to exclude the testimony of the defendant's experts. Two separate cases in Italy, in 2009 and 2017, resulted in pensions being awarded to plaintiffs who had claimed their benign brain tumors were the result of prolonged mobile phone use in professional tasks, for five to six hours a day, which they ruled different from non-professional use. In 2000, the World Health Organization recommended that the precautionary principle could be voluntarily adopted in this case. It follows the recommendations of the European Community for Environmental Risks.
According to the WHO, the precautionary principle is a risk management policy applied in circumstances with a high degree of scientific uncertainty, reflecting the need to take action for a potentially serious risk without awaiting the results of scientific research. Other less stringent recommended approaches are prudent avoidance principle and as low as reasonably practicable. Although all of these are problematic in application, due to the widespread use and economic importance of wireless telecommunication systems in modern civilization, there is an increased popularity of such measures in the general public, though also evidence that such approaches may increase concern. They involve recommendations such as the minimization of cell phone usage, the limitation of use by at-risk population, the adoption of cell phones and microcells with as low as reasonably practicable levels of radiation, the wider use of hands-free and earphone technologies such as Bluetooth headsets, the adoption of maximal standards of exposure. RF field intensity and distance of base stations antennas from human habitations, and so forth. Overall, public information remains a challenge as various health consequences are evoked in the literature and by the media, putting populations under chronic exposure to potentially worrying information. In May 2011, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer announced it was classifying electromagnetic fields from mobile phones and other sources as possibly carcinogenic to humans and advised the public to adopt safety measures to reduce exposure, like use of hands-free devices or texting. Some national radiation advisory authorities, including those of Austria, France, Germany, and Sweden, have recommended measures to minimize exposure to their citizens. Examples of the recommendations are The use of hands-free was not recommended by the British Consumers Association in a statement in November 2000, as they believed that exposure was increased. However, Measurements for the UK Department of Trade and Industry and others for the French agents Frances de Securite Sanitaire Environnemental showed substantial reductions. In 2005, Professor Laurie Chalice and others said clipping a ferrite bead onto hands-free kits stops the radio waves travelling up the wire and into the head. Several nations have advised moderate use of mobile phones for children. A journal by Gandhi ETAL in 2006 states that children receive higher levels of specific absorption rate. When 5 and 10 year olds are compared to adults, they receive about 153% higher SAR levels. Also, with the permittivity of the brain decreasing as one gets older and the higher relative volume of the exposed growing brain in children, Radiation penetrates far beyond the midbrain. Products have been advertised that claim to shield people from M radiation from cell phones. In the US, the Federal Trade Commission published a warning that scam artists follow the headlines to promote products that play off the news and prey on concerned people. According to the FTC, there is no scientific proof that so-called shields significantly reduce exposure from electromagnetic emissions. Products that block only the earpiece or another small portion of the phone are totally ineffective because the entire phone emits electromagnetic waves. Such shields may interfere with the phone's signal, cause it to draw even more power to communicate with the base station, and possibly emit more radiation. The FTC has enforced false advertising claims against companies that sell such products. Use hands-free to decrease the radiation to the head, keep the mobile phone away from the body, do not use telephone in a car without an external antenna.